Pelican case. Careful. So I might, we're vlogging. We're vlogging. Yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> you and that damn camera. I love this camera. All right, everybody, welcome back for another vlog, gun store vlog. I've got Andy in the store. Of course, we have little Andy in the front room as always, but Andy has started off the day for us by bringing us in some show and tell. So we're gonna look at this together. Andy always brings in the cool stuff. Hold on, let me get the, uh... okay, what you got? Now, it's 24 inch eight twist, long range AR. Oh boy. This is the one you built, isn't it? I built it. It's on an 80% lower. The upper parts are mix and match. Like I said, the barrel's a one and eight. Uh, it's a 223 wild chamber. Shoots everything up to about 80 grain bullets real well. And what's the scope you have on it? The scope is a Cabela scope, branded. It's actually made by Miata. It's a pretty decent piece of glass. Um, what are the specs on it? Well, it's a 6 to 18 by 50, or 44, excuse me. Or no, it is 50, okay. I have too many of them, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> I did have to add a rail extension on it with uh, oh, yeah, I see that. about a 15 or 20 minute MOA, I believe it was 20, simply because I could not get the scope much over 150 yards. The zero was just... It was high. What are the rings? The rings are Burris Extreme Tactical. Yeah. Uh, those are by far my favorite rings. They're a good sturdy ring. You can get them in aluminum or steel, either one. They're cut from a single piece of steel, so everything fits good. It's got a free float tube, Luth AR fixed stock. Um, the internal parts are mix and match from Brownells. Just something that I put together that shoots very well. Yeah. Andy is very good at putting together ARs. Really cool ARs. You do not, you do pull out all the stops. That's really cool. Alright, show us what else you got. This is Savage 10 and 223. Oh wow. It does have the AccuStock. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. Okay, um, go right into the scope. What is that? That is a Burris Eliminator 3. It has a built in range finder. Wow. Uh, you have to program your round into it, and it has a book that I did not bring that has probably 5,000 different cartridges in it manufacturers, weights, etc. You find your cartridge. If you can't find your specific cartridge, then you put your specs in manually. It will tell you how far away the target is and put a little red dot on the crosshairs where you need to hold. That is super cool. They claim uh, 750 yards on fur, 1,750 yards on reflective materials. That's very impressive. So what's the uh, retail on one of these scopes? The scope itself runs about 1,300. Okay, that's actually not bad. That's not as bad as I was thinking. Not for what it is. No. It is kind of wasted on this 223. We got to um, put it on something. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> and at the time, that was what was handy real quick. <laughs> I think I'm gonna move it to one of the 308s. Yeah, just that would make sense. For the range. Well, very, very cool. All right, Andy's got some more show and tell for us. Andy, what do you got? Well, this is a Mossberg Model 42 M. It's a target rifle, within reason. Uh, peep sight, ghost ring front sight, 22 short, long, long rifle. Actually a nice shooting little rifle. It's magazine fed, bolt action. Not a whole lot more to tell about it, really. That's really cool, Owens. Where did you pick this up? I don't know. 
When I've had it for a while. When were these made? That was made in the 40s. <coughs> it used to belong to a smoker. <coughs> Probably. You, yeah, oh yeah. Well, no, that may be because Kelly smokes in the garage. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's actually, that feels really good, and I like the sights on it. It's really cool. Okay, Andy, what else do you have for us? Interesting. This is a Mossberg 142A. That is a really interesting bolt handle. Well, there's more interest to it than that. This is also another little target gun of sorts. It wasn't as much of a target. And yeah, the T-handle was unique to the Mossbergs and different. This also has a fold-down handle in the front so you can brace up a little better when you shoot. That's really cool. A little T-handle, yeah. Actually, it's an interesting, you can get a really good purchase like this, um, mm -hmm. and you can snag it here, or around the T, and probably here, and then push in with your thumb, and then grab the top of it. But see, you actually, it actually feels natural. Or you can just hold on to it and do that. But that's pretty cool. I like that. And what's the scope on? It's a little scope. It's a Bushnell. It's a little Bushnell. Yeah. Interesting. Back when Bushnell actually made some decent stuff. And change cases and we'll get to something a little bigger than a 22. This was actually from the 50s, that second one. Oh, cool. I think I may have had this in here before. I showed you, but I'm not sure. This is a 1956 Winchester Model 71. It's the next to the last year they made them. I did add the peep sight in the rear over the blade sight that's on it. This is chambered in 348 Winchester, and with the exception of a Browning commemorative that was made in the late 80s, the only rifle ever chambered in the round. It is a big heavy action. Yeah, it is. sights you have on it too. And this from a box about the same year is the round. 200 grain bullet at about 2400 feet a second. So lots of stopping power. Yes. Oh yeah. Very nice. And that's all I got today. All right and that is show and tell with Andy. Thank you Andy. You're welcome. Okay, guys, something else really cool that came in, uh, you guys might find interesting. Actually, I'm pretty sure most of you will find this pretty interesting, but what I have here to go along with the spirit of the Uzi we got in is a Mac 10 in 9mm. This is a transferable machine gun. Uh, basically, it's very interesting. This um, came in, it was a customer of ours who got it in an estate uh, from his state, from his father who passed away, unfortunately. Uh, wanted to move it along and uh, get into some other hobbies, so he sold it to us. Um, really, really interesting. These are about, for those of you into the machine gun market, these are about the cheapest you can get as these are kind of known as introductory machine guns to the machine gun world. So, um, basically, very simple, open bolt, fires from the open bolt. It is semi-automatic or fully automatic select fire, of course. Uh, the stock is a kind of a little folding wire stock, so you have a button here on this side. You kind of push. It's kind of complicated. Well, not really complicated, but I think it might just be this particular one maybe. But you push in and then fold it out. And then there is a button here on the bottom. You push and you can retract the stock, kind of giving you that sort of deal. Not the most comfortable thing in the world, but also very, very interesting, very cool. 
30, I think a 30 round stick mags, double column, double feed. Uh, again, this is the MAC-10, so this would be the full size, which you would find chambered in 9 or most commonly 45. Then the MAC-11 is a little bit smaller, which you would find in 9 millimeter. Um, but very interesting um, threaded barrel. I do have the suppressor for this coming in. It just hasn't, the paperwork hasn't cleared yet. So the uh, original owner, he had both. So the original owner was able to bring this in because they got the paperwork back on this. The paperwork for the suppressor has cleared. We just don't have the suppressor yet. So when we get that, we'll have the full thing. And I am going to do both a dedicated video to this, like I did with the Uzi. Then I will do an Uzi comparison, which I think will be pretty interesting since a lot of people who don't know a lot about guns typically call this an Uzi, <laughs> but it's really not. Um, but anyway, I just want to show you guys that as sort of a preview. More videos to come on this. All right, guys, well, that is our vlog for you. Now, Andy and I will be doing our first live stream on Saturday, June 30th probably going to be around seven or eight o'clock eastern time is when we'll get started on it uh it'll be the first live stream i've ever done so i'm not going to know how long it's going to take to figure out how to get things going if we need to set up a camera or just use my webcam or use a microphone or anything like that so the first few minutes of the stream might be a little bit weird as we try and figure out technical setup on that but uh, if you're interested in asking us questions andy actually knows a ton of stuff uh, I think between the two of us, uh, we might be able to answer some uh, some questions you guys might have. And also, since we're going to be doing the stream in the store, we can grab guns out of inventory and show you and do disassemblies or answer specific questions about things we have in stock, which might be uh, beneficial to some of you guys. But anyway, if you're interested in that, come check that out. Again, Saturday, June 30th at around 7 or 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping in. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments section. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Again, this is Chris and Andy with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time.